Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to continue from where we left off um, previously, but we're going to be starting a new file. And what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be going through more CSS um, things, but very, but in particular, what we're going to be looking at is positioning. Um, and positioning is uh, basically allows you to control where the your objects are your different di divisions or other block level elements um, are arranged on the page. And there's many different forms. Right now, um, as I was testing this, right, I added an audio um, file, and here's this audio controller here at the bottom. And this is set to be sticky. And what that means is that when I change the um, page here, or if I scroll, um, I have this stuck to the bottom of the window. So it stays put while the other content on the page moves. Um, and so, right, so that's one way of positioning. And we're going to talk about several different types of positioning and how you can use those to really create some interesting um, compositions and totally mess things up and have text overlaid on top of itself and completely illegible and and do some interesting um, things um, using CSS. So let's go ahead and get started. So this, um, to start, we're gonna uh, we're gonna work with some of these things because right now these are all set to be um, positioned in the center of the screen, right? And you'll note that they are right all vertical. There's nothing. Um, they're not. You know, I haven't really showed you how to set things next to one another, right? They're all just in this vertical row down the center of the page. So let's go on ahead and see how we can um, make that next change. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and make it so that we can actually have these next to each other. And so what we need to do is there's, um, with positioning, there's several different types of ways we can position things. We've already looked at using the margins um, to position things. Uh, but one of the other ways that we can do positioning is using the float property. And so for these divs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily um, disable these lines here. Now, in order to disable those lines all at once, um, there's a way you can do um, you know, a special um, set of keystrokes to, um, to comment out any highlighted text. And if you, you know, don't know how to do that, we can just go to um, View, Command Palette, and we can type on, um, right, if we just type in Comment, which was actually the last thing I did, but, right, we can say, you know, Add Line Comment, which is not what we want to do. We want to do a block comment, right? And if we say Toggle Block Comment, you'll see, for me, it's Shift, Option, and A. If you're on Windows, that's probably Shift, Alt, a. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to select this text, and I'm going to say Shift Option A, and that's going to go ahead and comment the, those lines out. And then if I select this again and say Shift Option A, it'll toggle it back to being uncommented. Right. So this is a really fast way to test things and make changes quickly. So let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is we're going to say float colon and there's several options we can either, but typically we would say left, none, or right in this set. And what we want to do is we want to say float left, um, I think. And we'll see how this or organizes it. Now, what this is going to do, right, this is for our general div tag. So any div that we have, even though the formatting here is different based on these uh, controls here, we can now have those all align. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's just go ahead and refresh this page. And there we go, right? So these are now um, floating left. And what that means is if the window is super narrow, they're going to still be vertical. But as it goes forward, they're going to stretch out. Now, there's some other, um, you know, settings that we have in here that um, potentially could be changed to make this, you know, to make these things stay put. Um, Specifically, we could have another div that houses all three of these um, that we would give a width of, say, you know, 900 or probably a little bit more, like a thousand pixels, so that they would stay in there 
Whereas, right, with this, because the, the window's reframing everything, it keeps switching. So let's go ahead and um, create this other div to house these divs um, as a container. And then let's see if we can get that to work. Now, one of the issues is that, right, it's going to have all of this, um, all of these settings, right, that are in our general div setting. So typically, it would be better to say, oh, this should be the, you know, you would want to have, you know, a series of smaller, smaller divs here. But what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and let's go ahead and copy all of this. And let's go ahead and paste this up here. And we're just going to call that it's going to be div. Um, and actually what we probably need to do is this should be the one that is normal. This one will be div. Um, I'm just going to call it big something simple but it's going to be the one that contains these three and um so we can make sure so if we have any settings up here that like our border radius and border and all of that right we need to essentially nullify those settings so with float we can just say none um margin top let's go ahead and leave that the same border uh let's go ahead and change the color of that um this border will show us where the bounds of that that new div r which is going to be pretty useful i'm going to make that an ugly green um, we'll set the border radius to zero and padding can be fine but let's go ahead and change our width and let's say we want this width to be we know each of these is 300 but then there's also the padding and the margin and everything else that's going on in there and so let's just make this 1200 pixels <laughs> not 12,000 or or one or or 120,000 let's do 1200 pixels and let's set the background color to something obviously different than everything else on screen. Let's just do like a really, you know, kind of warmish white. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we need to go back to our box model um, page because that's the one that we've been working on. And we've got, right, all of these divs here. These are the three divs that we're interested in. And so... Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is um, we're going to make a div that encloses all of these. And so I'm going to go ahead and type in div. And when I do this, right, it's going to automatically complete this. But what I need to do is I want to take this ending tag and I want to cut it, right? Command or control X, depending on what system you're using. And then I'm going to come all the way down here below this bottom div and I'm going to paste it. And then what I can do is I can just hit delete here so that this kicks over one. And now I could select all of these lines. And if I want to update that indent, I can just go to view, command palette. Remember, I can type in indent and just say indent line and pop those all over a little bit, right? So it's all organized correctly. And now with this div, I need to set my class equal to big. And if I save this and refresh this, <laughs> right, I've got these three items in here, but you'll see that, right, <laughs> they're, they're positioned below it, but it is working, right? No matter, right, what size this is, these are all stuck to each other in the right orientation. Um, but there are some, uh, there are some problems with, um, <laughs> with some of my um, arrangements here. Okay, so one thing we can try is we can also try to adjust the margin at the top of the page, right? And so the margin at, uh, at the top of our div. So if I set that to zero and I save this, I come in here and I render, uh, reload, right? It does move up into this box. However, this thing still isn't adjusting to the height of these objects. Now, there one of the, the issue is that this float property really does kind of break the horizontal or the vertical nature of this div and there's not much we can do about it except to add a height to our to this um not to these divs sorry but to the to this big one right and so i've got my width set to 1200 if i come down here and i type in height and set this to um let's see here let's just set it to 450 pixels I have no idea if that's enough or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and test it and render. Okay, so that's too big. 
<laughs> so let's go ahead and make that uh, 200, not 2,000. And let's just see where we're at there. Right, I could do some math and figure this out. It looks like if we were at like maybe 300 pixels high, we're pretty close, right? Now we could go ahead and um, make this uh, go ahead and with our margin top here that we set to zero for all of these interior divs, um, we could go ahead and set that to, um, if we set that to auto, and if we set margin bottom to auto, it should center it in whatever container we put in there. But let's go ahead and make sure that this works. And then auto as well. Okay, save this, reload. Um, I don't see any change there. Um, and so it may be a padding issue um, or a margin issue, but yeah, it's not, it looks like I might want to add, I might want to set these manually. Um, let's go ahead and set that to 50 pixels and just see what we get there. All right, that's going to be a little bit too far. Um, let's just say 20 pixels, save it, fresh. There, that's just about right. Um, and you'll note that I have the auto on the other side, um, and it's not really going to make any difference in terms of how that is formed. Okay, so right, doing that allowed me to get these centered um, within the um, within the box. But now there's this issue where they're all smushed up next to each other, right? And they're kind of crammed against this side. And it'd be nice if there was some space between here. Now. We should know at this point, right, that in order to get space between two divs, um, what we want to adjust is one of the margins, right? And specifically, um, we may be happy with the margin um, or the, the there's, there's a lot going on here, right? Because there's probably some padding um, out here and then we'd have the margin, which would be assigned. <laughs> so this is where... Um, things can get a little confusing just because you have to keep in mind that we're using this box model and each div is has the box model being applied, right? So there's the margin top up here is the value of the big div that we've created and the margin and then within that div we have padding, right? So there's padding between here between this edge and the content, which are these other divs. So if I come down here and I look, um, right, and I have my normal div here, you'll see I have, okay, well, I have 20 pixels of padding, you know, from here to here. And then if I go to this, then, right, and even though I don't have, oh, I have padding set here too. It's the same value, right? Okay, so in either case, I have 20 pixels of padding, and then I have the margin for these interior um, divisions, right? So if I go up to here, I have the margin top. So there's about 40 pixels, you know, from the inside of this green line to the outside of this blue line, right? And that's because there's, we have both the mar the padding from this one and the margin from the interior divs, right? And so we also have, you know, 20 pixels of padding here. And if we look at our main div, we don't have any left or right margin whatsoever. So this is just 20 pixels of padding to there. And that's why there's a gap here, but there's no gap between any of these other elements. And so, oops, no, there we go. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to adjust the margin between these. Now we could either do margin left or margin right, but if we're, if we're happy where margin that with our margin left being set to zero, so we have only 20 pixels here and we're not worried about but using both the padding from the exterior div and the margin from the interior div, then we should do margin right. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna put space basically where we want it, right? We want space to the right of this first one and to the right of the second one. So let's go ahead and do some spacing there. So I'm gonna go to my, um, my regular div here and I'm just going to go ahead and say we have margin top, margin bottom. Let's go ahead and say margin dash right. And let's just set that to 20 pixels and save this and render this. Okay, right, right? We 
now have 20 pixels here, 20 pixels there, and 20 pixels there. It looks nice and even, but we have kind of this, all of this stuff hanging out off the side here. Now, one thing we could do is we could um, adjust the, um, the width of the big div by units of 20 until we're, until it's about where it needs to be um, to fit all of this content. Um, so if we go ahead and we were to drop this down to say, I don't know, let's say, let's just try 1000 to start with and see where we get to. That's probably right. That's too, that's too much. So let's just say 1180 or 1120. Let's just say 1100 actually. Why don't we just start there? 1100 is too small. So let's go up to 1140 and we will refresh this. There we go. We got 1140, but that still looks a little big. Um, we can also do, let's say 1120. Let's save that. And refresh it. Oh, 1120 is too small. 1120. Let's try 1121. Let's just see. Oops. Let's just see what happens when we do that. Nope. It's still too small. So it looks like 11. 20 or 11, maybe 1130 might, might give us a better, oh, still not right. So it looks like 1140 is what we want. Um, if I go ahead and render it, reload that, there we go. Right. And you'll know it still isn't quite right. And what's the issue here? Why is this not, not the way it should be? So it, it's actually twice the thickness of our um, gaps in here. And that's because, right, we have on all of our divs, we've got this, you know, we don't have, we have a, a margin of zero here, but we have a margin of 20 here. And then we have padding of 20 on this side. So something we could do, right, if we're, if we want this to be formatted perfectly and we, it needs to be whatever, 1200 pixels wide or 1140 pixels wide and we don't want it to change size at all um, the one, one thing that we can do here is we could come in and on our big one we could just say that oh we need to make our margin right it needs to be zero pixels right so if I make margin right zero pixels and I was to save that and then re refresh um, it should trim it down, but it did not for some reason. Hmm. Okay, so, right, this is getting confusing. It's not working the way that we want it to. No matter what, I seem to have this edge over here that doesn't want to play nicely, and I can't figure out why it's happening. There is one other tool that we can use for... Um, figuring out what the heck is going on. <laughs> um, sometimes it doesn't work that well, um, but in this case I know it will work really well for figuring out what we need to do. And that's in the browser that you're using. Now, if you're using Safari, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, go over to Safari and you need to go up to File and you need to go, um, you know, sorry, you need to go to your Preferences. And um, in your preferences, there is, which one is it? I can never remember, is it advanced? Um, yes, under advanced, the very last option is show develop menu in menu bar. You wanna check mark that. And then you can close your preferences. And you'll see you get this develop menu and there's all of these different developer options here, right? Which basically these are all meant to help you debug um, your uh, websites in their browser. And so um, there's, you know, I can't remember what it's called here. I think it's, is it show web inspector? Is that the one I want? Yes. So in Safari, it's called show web inspector. And what it does is it actually brings up all of your code here. Um, but it also lets you look at your style sheets, um, right? Which I'm just using this website as a default, but then there's obviously plenty of style sheets on here. Um, and so I can select these different style sheets. You'll note people that do style sheets that are intended to be used by other people, um, definitely uh, comment them out, com put a comment in so you know what the heck you're doing. Um, right, but so all of these, um, right, these style sheets that are in here um, allow us to see what's going on and edit them. 
Um, and you can kind of see, um, you know, there's a, there's a fair amount of of stuff here. So um, the in and I can't remember. I don't remember where everything is here. You'd you'd have to just open some of these windows and find out yourself. I'm sorry. Um, I was hoping that the web inspector was going to show me the um, what I wanted to see. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and take a look um, elsewhere for, for for Safari. But for Chrome, I know where it's at because I've used it extensively. Um, so with Chrome, all you need to do is you go to edit or sorry view and you go down to developer. And in there's several options right there. You can just view source, which essentially opens up a new tab with the source of the web page in it. Um, you can also go just go to developer tools, which is what we want. And what that does is it opens up a sidebar. Sometimes this is down on the bottom. Um, it just depends. Uh, but it opens up a sidebar. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And what's really nice about the way they do things is that my box model is right here. So whatever um, element I have selected um, in my hierarchy, I can come down and I can actually highlight this and say, oh, here's my margin. That's what my margins looks like. look like is that tan box. Here's my border, right, which we know. Um, and if I come down a little bit smaller, here's my padding. And you'll see that even though I have my, on this big one, I have my padding right set to zero, or so I thought, I still have 20 pixels of padding on all sides of the box. And that's where the problem is coming in, right? Is that there's this extra 20 pixels on the on one side. And so um, I need to figure out like, well, how, how can I adjust this? And if I'm going back and forth, um, between these two, also by the way, it it anything right? These are the these are the CSS properties that are being applied to um, the object, right? They're coming from div big and they're coming from div. The ones that are crossed out are the ones that are being essentially overwritten by this class, right? Our our big class overwrites the a couple of the defaults that we set up, right? Instead of corn flour blue, it's right green and all of those things. So you can kind of see which ones are not being used and which ones are being used. And if I come up here to the for top one, you'll see I do have padding right set to zero, but then I have padding set to 20. So what's probably happening is that I'm setting it to zero and then I'm setting it back to 20 pixels, right? If I uncheck this padding 20, that issue resolves, right? You'll, you can notice that what's really awesome about this tool is that it allows you to, um, to turn on and off individual style elements and watch the response in real time. So I've turned off the padding, right, 20, which now makes this padding right zero and everything is the way it should be. So let's go to our code and let's see if we can, um, if we can make an adjustment to our padding setting and get rid of that padding right real quick. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to come back in here and right. So here's my padding, right? So I'm saying set padding right to zero. And then I tell the computer, well, set all the padding to 20. So it basically overrules this set padding right to zero. So one way you can use padding and you can use margin um, in CSS is to put all four values on one line. Now the, um, the trick is the order of these, right? And it's top, right, bottom, left. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Why don't we put a comment in here? Because that would probably help us. So it's, um, backslash star. And then we can say bottom or sorry, <laughs> top, right, bottom, left right? So we have it in here. I mean, you'll know that you'll know by where padding shows up or disappears, um, the order in which <laughs> this is. So we want the padding right to not be existent, right? Cause that's where that, that doubling is happening. So if I say, okay, so what is it? It's top, right? So if I say zero pixels here and then I render this, there we go, right? That allows us to trim those extra 20 pixels off and we are in a good place. 
right? So, um, so this is like a short, this is a way to do this without having to write out, right? Top, bottom, right, and have everything be on its own. And so you can do auto in here as well. So we could potentially take this line that we have here, this margin, we can say margin, um, colon, and then we can say top, right? So top is 20 pixels, right is 20 pixels. Um, uh, da, 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 da. See here, bottom is um, auto, and then left, did we, we don't have any, um, you know, we haven't set a margin on the left. I think it is actually zero. So let's go ahead and type zero pixels and semicolon. We'll save that. And then we can actually select both of these lines, hold shift option A to comment those out, save it again and refresh, right? It should look exactly the same, right? Um, we've just made it right, a little bit cleaner, right? We're just doing all those steps in one place. So those are your options. If you prefer to um, do the dashes because it's more clear what's what, and you don't have to think about the order that these are in, um, you can do that. It's, it's totally up to you which way you wanna go with that. Okay, so we've done all this, but what if we want this, the width of our box, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this side panel here so that this is smaller. But what if we want, right, right now this is not responsive. And by responsive, I mean it does not change with the size or shape of the viewing, the viewport, right? What if we want this to be more responsive? Like usually there's a point where it's just going to be, the window will be too small. Um, but let's say we want this to be more responsive and we want these elements to stay evenly spaced um, you know, regardless of how big this exterior box gets. So there's a couple things we're going to need to do to set that up. First, for our div big, we are going to need to set our width to auto. And right, what auto does is right, it's automatic. It it will conform to um, <laughs> whatever size. Now you'll see that when we do this, right that big box is changing size, but it's forcing our interior content up and down and like that. And that's not what we want. And so we need to use, we need to set this to be a different display type. And the display type that we're going to use for this, um, which I'm gonna go ahead and just put right up here at the top. I'm gonna say display colon flex. And once I've made this a uh, flex display, then what I can do is I can add another line here that's justify content. And I can just say, let's, um, uh, which one would it, do I want to use? Space between? Um, I thought center was an option to, there, yeah, okay. Yeah, we, let's just go ahead and do, let's start with center to start with. And we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to refresh this. And you'll see that now, right, these things <laughs> change dimensions, right, a little bit um, as part of this flex box. And eventually they, rather than um, pop down the page, they actually still stay within the div that they're part of. They just, you know, push beyond the boundaries a little bit. Um, but we get this nice, Thing, right we have those 20 pixels between them and they're all centered and it doesn't matter what we do they stay centered so if we change this to justify content and let's just try um, space between let's try that okay save this and oh and refresh so now right we've got our objects justified but it's sort of like the justifying text where you get more or less space between words. Um, if there's fewer words on the line versus more words on the line, right? So it's just a slightly different um, way of spacing this. And so what I would suggest is that you go through and you, you test um, what these different things do. So if I delete everything here and I do that, that colon, it's going to pop up all of these options and <laughs> 
you know, I can make it unsafe. Um, you could read what that means, right? There's, you know, flex start, flex end. There's, you know, lots of different um, possible ways that we can that we can justify that content. You know, if we justify right or left, um, you know, these things probably make um, sense, right? Because we've all justified text, right? So that's all justified to one side. Um, although I thought it justified it to the right, not to the left, but whatever. Um, if I type in left here, there may be some setting that I have set that's not going to work with that. Um, I'm not quite sure why justify right didn't work, but um, you know, all some of the other ones do, and you just need to test and see which ones which ones function. Okay, so. Right, I've got those all centered. Um, you will note that those boxes move a little bit, and I'm not too concerned about this at, at that at this point. Okay, so this is a way that right we can nest our elements, and we can get them to align. They can be responsive, um, and we have everything set up. So this is one form of positioning. Right, we haven't really um, talked about um, you know, some of the other forms yet, or even used the position element, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at that here in the next section.